Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I am joined by my fabulous co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. Uh, and today we are interviewing a Bitcoiner Oscar Mary from Fountain, a podcast 2.0 application, which is thinking different and is integrated with Lightning. Uh, so, how are you doing today, Oscar? Hey, Lawrence. Great to be on. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks. Nice. Uh, and so Fountain, uh, I, I'll let you give us a quick intro to what Fountain is and what it's about uh, in a second. But I guess first question was, uh, who, who's the team uh, behind Fountain? Uh, you know, give us, a, give us a quick introduction to yourself and your, your colleagues. Yeah, so uh, we're a small team at Fountain. There's just three of us, myself, um, my business partner, Nick, and we have one employee, Niall, as well. So it's the three of us building Fountain Podcast. Nice. And, and what do you guys, uh, do you have like different roles within the company or, or what do you guys get up to? Yeah. So myself, I'm the uh, CEO, but also kind of leading the product and tech side of things. So originally um, I built the app uh, myself. And then since then, Niall's come on as a developer to help me out on the technical side of things. And then Nick um, looks after everything on the marketing and podcaster side. That's really important for us, obviously, because we're onboarding new podcasters to the Lightning Network through our podcaster wallet feature. So, yeah, happy to talk about that more uh, in a bit. But, yeah, that's that's our kind of roles. But s such a small team that we kind of all do everything as well. Standard for uh, like sort of startup life. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like two of you or three of you. You're, doing, you know, you're wearing multiple hats. Um been there before i i guess so yeah it would be good if you can just sort of explain to everyone give us the you know the, the brief on, on fountain like uh where where the idea came from what it's about and like why it's different and why people should download the app yeah happy to so fountain fundamentally is a podcast app it does everything that you'd expect a podcast app to do in terms of searching for podcasts saving podcasts and listening to podcasts the two key differentiators are number one as the listener on Fountain, you can create and share clips. And we believe this is really exciting because what it allows you to do as a listener is essentially surface and share the best moments from podcasts without actually having to go and listen to the full episode. I'm happy to talk about more about why we think that's so important and why it's kind of so beneficial for sharing and discovering insights from podcasts. Then the second differentiator is you can support your favorite podcast with Bitcoin as you listen. So you can stream per minute and you can send what's called a boost, which is kind of like a tip with a message. And that's all done over the Lightning Network. Gotcha. Okay. So the first the first part is like, um, so listeners can create clips and share them, right? Like, uh, the thing. yeah, so it's kind of like uh, turning your listeners into advertisers for you in a way um so like fans can help spread the, the message i think you're right like if you hear little clips like uh, i know one of the things that joe rogan did really well was having his like clips that were all over youtube that kind of people would hear a little bit and then they'd end up listening to the full show um and i know other podcasts have done that really well as well like little sound bites can be can be great for that um, where did the idea like i guess what what were you what were you um and and nick doing before fountain like where did this idea come from what what were you guys up to and, and how did this come? Is this like a eureka moment or is there a... So I was, I've worked in tech my whole career, basically. I actually uh, previously had a, had another business um, which started as a digital agency and then we kind of switched to being more of a studio. We built apps in the, uh, the voice app space. So I think Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, um, sold that business um, a few years ago. So I was kind of in between things, like trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And um, really, me and Nick were just experimenting with, we both shared this belief that there's an issue in not just podcasting, but audio content in terms of how do you actually share and discover it. Um, so that's really what we set out to do. And then the, we actually built a prototype of the clipping UI, which was kind of like the first, um, you know, aspect of Fountain to actually get built. So we, on Fountain, the way you create clips is a little bit different so rather than messing around with the audio wave with which some other podcast apps let you do with fountain we actually transcribe the entire episode and then as a listener you can just select the text that you want and that's how you create the clip and then we'll automatically based on the word timings of the transcript kind of cut up the audio for you and what this does and the reason why we thought it was gonna you know be 
really well received by listeners is that it just makes it so much easier to create a clip because imagine you're trying to create a clip of a, an hour long podcast um, just from the audio wave. What you end up having to do is hold a lot of information in your head. So you've got to hold, okay, what timestamp did this segment that I want to clip start at? Like what's the actual time? What timestamp did this end at? And then what did the speaker actually say in all of, in between that start time and that end time, all whilst like messing around with an audio wave slider. So it's actually really difficult. Whereas everybody knows how to just select text on a page and edit it. We do it every day, whether it's in an email or a message or, or anything else. So it was that ability to really easily and quickly create clips without too much kind of cognitive load that was where Fountain started. Um, and then very quickly, we were following what Adam Curry and Dave Jones were doing with Podcasting 2.0. And separate to my kind of previous experience with tech, I'd always been a massive believer in Bitcoin. Never thought I'd necessarily work in Bitcoin. Um, but when I saw the Podcasting 2.0 value spec, it was just like two of my uh, you know, deepest interests in podcasting and Bitcoin kind of um, merged in a way. And so we doubled down on that and made it a big part of uh, the Fountain app and the experience. Uh, that's interesting. I, I think that the way that Clips is done from, as you described, is pretty uh, pretty different. And I think you're right. Like, it seems like a much better idea. I, I've, I've experimented with the app, but I haven't like looked at the Clip function yet. So I'll have a look at that um, actually after this. But I um, is it something that has been well received compared to other applications? Like, have you had feedback uh, around it? Are people Are people fans? Yeah, definitely. And I think touching on what you said before about how successful Joe Rogan was through his the his clips channel on YouTube. So we know that clips are beneficial to podcasters because they help those podcasters get their content discovered and they help people sample it. And ultimately they will drive audience to the main podcast. So we knew it was going to be beneficial to podcasters. Um, but it's also really beneficial beneficial to listeners too, because I'm sure you know, many of the people listening to this and many of you guys um, had the same problem as me, which is I've got too many podcasts to listen to each day. There's just too much coming through. And so we have a decision every day to make about which episode to listen to. If I see that somebody I follow on Fountain has created a clip from an episode, I can just quickly listen to that clip, 30 seconds, one minute, 90 seconds, and I can get a feel for the episode and I can understand, okay, do I want to go and listen to the full thing? Um, so that's one benefit of giving the clipping ability to listeners. It kind of serves as a signal for you about which episodes are, you know, important to go and listen to. And then the other thing that's quite cool about extending the power of clipping to listeners is that you can sometimes listen to things that are not in your um, existing bubble. So, you know, maybe you listen to or subscribe to 10 podcasts and you listen to them regularly, but that's, that's not to say that a podcast out there that's on a completely different topic that maybe you're not that interested enough to go and subscribe to it, but maybe there's one episode that you wouldn't mind just listening to on a one-off. And so again, if someone that you're following on Fountain, or maybe you just discover that clip on uh, an external social media site, if you can hear a minute clip and it sparks your interest, then maybe you'll end up going and listening to the full episode and you know learning about something that's outside your normal you know, filter bubble of, of podcast episodes coming through. So I think, you know, there's a lot of benefits bringing the clipping capability to listeners and doing it in a social way. And I think um, it's definitely been really well received. And actually, it's really, it's quite fun just seeing what other people are clipping because you get a window into their listening experience. I think one thing that we could do that would make the experience much, much easier is... Right now, we're actually using a commercial transcription service, which means that when you hit that clip button for the first time, it takes like a couple of minutes for it to transcribe. Obviously, that's not the best experience for brand new users coming to the app, but hopefully at some point we'll, uh, we'll fix that and actually roll our own transcription and we can have instant transcription. For the transcription service, are you guys charging podcasters for that? I know with other podcasting services, they charge for transcription. No, so we don't actually charge podcasters or users for the transcription. Um, one of the issues we have is actually a surprisingly large number of podcasts have dynamic ad insertion, which means that, you know, the audio that 
I get as a listener might be different to the audio that you get. And because our clipping UI depends on the word by word timestamps, if one person has a 45 second ad versus a 30 second ad like inserted into the audio, it completely messes up the transcript. So we actually transcribe every episode individually for each user, which is why using a commercial service, we wouldn't be able to do that at scale, uh, you know, before you actually hit the button. We've got some ways that we think we can improve that. But um, yeah, that's how it works right now. Yeah, one thing you mentioned was like the clipping and, and the power of clipping as well. Um, and I think, have you got, have you seen um, Midnight Gospel on Netflix? A little bit, a little bit different, but um, I don't know if you've seen it or heard of it. It's, um, no. it's like a, it's like a sort of fully, and I, I, when I, first like heard of like, heard of it or whatever it was just i think it was probably about two two years ago um when it came out but i um it's basically clips from uh duncan trussell's uh podcast and he has like a podcast where he talks with lots of different people uh and it's kind of quite like uh weird odd topics right they'll be talking like death or like, quite like deep stuff uh and what they did was they they kind of took clips from that and then created like this kind of it's really bizarre i don't have to explain it but it's kind of like an animated podcast so they like a it'll be like an animation of the guy, a guy and like uh, going through like an animated world and like talking to so it's kind of like he's interviewing a random person he sees in this like create world that's been created and each episode is like a different world different story but obviously like it's using the podcast and then they like they obviously record little bits to kind of make it f- fit in with the story they've created in that episode but it's pretty cool and that got me listening to the duncan trussell podcast uh which is like a bit different because it's obviously a lot longer and there's lots of different topics different interviewees but um something like that would be really cool in the future like i can imagine a situation where uh i don't know maybe some animate like if there's a situation in the future where we can get computers that can basically create animations for us like on the fly for podcasts or something uh i can imagine that could be kind of cool but it came to mind as uh all these different things like joe rogan i i started listening to that because of the clips channel on youtube years ago uh the midnight gospel got me listening to it so it's always like i find the podcasts i listen to are always because of some kind of shared clip or more digestible different version of the podcast that i've heard first and then I end up listening to it. So I think it adds some credence to what you're saying. But um, question for you here is uh, when it comes to podcasting 2.0, obviously, as you said, you created this clips function um, and then you were listening to what was going on with Adam Curry and, and et cetera around uh, lightning and, and podcasting 2.0 uh, and made the decision to kind of go down that road with uh, with Fountain and with this, this, this business. Uh, what is it about podcast 2.0? Well, I guess if you could give us a basic uh thing on, on why the listeners should give a give a damn about podcasting 2.0 but what is it about podcasting 2.0 that that right uh, kind of appealed to you guys like why did you decide this was the way to go um when it came to the app sure so podcasting 2.0 is a movement that was started by adam curry and dave jones um, and it has two main goals the first goal is to preserve the open nature of podcasting so podcasting's incredible because it's built on uh, and the open rss standard which means that you know listeners can use whatever app they want to there's healthy competition in the podcast app space um and also there's not the ability for any one platform to go and censor um a podcast which is obviously a big issue that we've seen on other social media platforms um having said that the big platforms like apple and spotify are starting to try and turn podcasting into this kind of walled garden so that's the first aim of podcasting 2.0 is to maintain that open uh, nature of podcasting and then the second is to actually extend uh, what podcasting is and try and build and add new features to the open source standard Um, and so there's a bunch of these there's things like chapters which allow you to kind of browse through the episode bit by bit which we also support There's things like person and location tags so that you can, as a podcaster, you know, put information about the guests and and the the apps can then render that. We support that also. Um, But obviously, the the particular tag that uh, we're really excited about and has generated a lot lot of excitement is the value block. And so the value block, what this does is it allows any podcaster to just put a lightning pub key in their RSS feed and then any of the podcasting 2.0 apps that um, support the value block can send lightning payments to that uh, pub key. So the really exciting thing about this is it introduces micro payments to podcasting, but it does it in a way that's completely open. So as a podcaster, 
if you want to, you can self-host your RSS feed and you can run your own Lightning node and people using any number of different apps can still not only listen to your podcast, but also support you um, and support you through micro payments. Um, so yeah, they're the two aspects of podcasting 2.0. And obviously, yeah, we think the value block and, and streaming money is the most exciting one of those. Yeah, um, I was going through the website and um, I was getting the kind of vibe that um, Fountain is Bitcoin centric. In a way, like I'm just wondering, do you have um, a dear like non Bitcoin and like podcasters on the fountain? Yeah, definitely. So I think a large number of the early users of Fountain are people that are also excited about Bitcoin. I think, you know, for me personally and for many others, it's really cool to be able to stream Bitcoin per minute over the lightning. Like I think that's a, an incredible example of the power of. Uh, Bitcoin and specifically Lightning, like there isn't another payments technology that would let us do that right now, especially not in an open way. Um, so yeah, a, a large number of our users are are Bitcoiners, but I also think that the clipping in particular, um, and also just the ethos of podcasting 2.0 has attracted a lot of users that weren't previously aware of Bitcoin or into Bitcoin. One of the interesting things is, a lot of our users have actually been introduced to Bitcoin for the very first time through Fountain and through podcasting, because this is all driven by the podcasters, not necessarily by Fountain. So, you know, we have we speak to podcasters and we tell them, hey, instead of using Patreon and asking users to, you know, leave the podcast app that they're in, go to Patreon, pick a subscription and then figure out whether they want to pay over time. Instead, just get them to use a podcasting 2.0 app like Fountain. And literally the moment that they're hearing that amazing bit of content, they can hit the boost button and pay you. So podcasters um, are excited about that. And they are asking their listeners to switch. So we're getting a lot of new users that, yeah, have never heard of Bitcoin before. And, you know, we have a convoluted way for them to get their first sats on Fountain. Obviously, we don't offer like a, an on-ramp uh right now um but yeah so i think that's really exciting that people are uh, being introduced to bitcoin for the first time not because of the uh you know the monetary uh system or thesis not because of not because it's they see it as an investment but because it's literally just something that they want to use to support their favorite podcast okay.